We've been sitting in traffic for about 20 minutes for the ferry and it's not moving. Check-in apparently closed seven minutes ago. You can see the ferry. I hope they're not just going to leave without us. And so guys, as our World Atlantic Way road trip comes to an end, our exit from Ireland does actually turn out to be slightly more dramatic than we had hoped for as we come this close to missing our ferry. Aside from that though, we do finish off our explorations along the southern coast of Ireland by celebrating when we get to the very southwesterly tip. And we also have one of the most local experiences that Ireland has to offer. I just love it. I love these like really local experiences where you meet people. It is also a week full of wild swimming and the usual gas whinging which you guys are also used to. So without further ado, let's get stuck into another week of van life in Ireland. All right guys, so you join us on a very exciting day. We have just officially driven the length of Ireland. We're now at the southwestern point of the entire country. We started off our trip right up the northeastern point. And we're now exploring Mizen Head, or Mizen Head, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it. And what an accomplishment. It has been a road trip and a half so far. Gosh, this is just beautiful, isn't it? I know. We've been so lucky that the weather is like this today. The water is like so clear and blue over there. And I love it, like the contrast against the big towering cliffs. Got the green grass, the white stone, the blue water, it just looks beautiful. Just keep watching that bit of water, there's definitely something there. I'm pretty sure it's dolphins. Right, just keep watching. There was watching. a signpost up at the entrance to the visitor centre talking about humpback whales, um, minky whales, basking, minky whales basking, sharks. basking sharks, dolphins, all kinds of sea life. But has Gemma just spotted a dolphin? I saw splashes and I was like, oh, what was that? Oh, it could have just been a rock. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, just right there. The way that it, the way that it came out of the water the first time, it didn't jump like a dolphin. It came round oh. and went on its back. Oh my god, oh. that's buzzing! I just, I can't stop watching now. I know. All right, we're gonna be here for the rest of the day now. We just saw a whale. where we're going. Are you excited? I am, although, I mean, typical me style. I'm wearing my Burks. Possibly should have wore trainers. The last time we were in Ireland, we went up to the one up in the Causeway Coast, Karakarid Bridge, and um, that was a good experience, I thought. It was. I just <laughs> get really jelly legs. Yeah, okay. No pressure, there's only people waiting. <laughs> you can't turn around. So. No pressure, just every, everyone's I know, watching. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Whoa, what a tour like dinosaur all I've been. Wow, and it is so wobbly as well. So how did you do? Right, are you ready? I know you're waiting for a reaction, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be fine. <laughs> it's concrete, it's wide. I don't think it shakes, I can't see it shaking. It's just like crossing. No, this bridge collapsed. And I'm. Oh. Okay, take it all back. Did you just hear that? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh! Okay, she did just jump. You just said I just jumped to test its stability. And then she just jumped and I felt it shake. Oh dear. So there's definitely a little bit of like vibration to it, isn't there? <laughs> no, I mean, to be fair, it's nothing like the one at Karaka Reed. I think we're pretty safe here. And it is nothing like the one in Malaga that we did. It's all right, the, the vultures are so circling to <laughs> cheer you on. Great. <laughs> Where, what was that called? Um, the Kenya, Kenyanita del Mar, I think. Del was it? No, Del Rey. Cal Calamito, oh, yeah. Calamana, na, na banana. Cal no, del Rey. Calamito Cal Cal del Rey. Okay, here we go. We are about to walk to the very southwest tip of Ireland. that I'd like walked it or cycled it or something, but we drove it. It is an achievement in itself. We did it! Woo! And I mean, today has just topped it all off, seeing whatever we saw out there. We're still not 100% sure on what it was. We're both kind of like looking at all the little diagrams in the buildings there, trying to decide what It was we saw either about. a harbour porpoise or a dolphin. Yeah. Definitely saw one of the two. Still very cool. I don't know, length of Ireland, there you go. And what is that you've got there then? Well, you know that book that we've been spending the past year writing? 
this is my little sample copy that I'm kind of just trying to get some shots of it around its home country in Ireland. Last spot, so if we thought, well, we might as well take it and get some photos up here. So if you stick around to the end, we might just be sharing a little discount code and some more information about when this is going to go live. But it's literally been our pride and joy over the past two months getting to visit all these magical places and write about this beautiful road trip. So stay tuned. After leaving Misenhead, we began our journey east along the southern coast of Ireland, our next stop at the small town of Baltimore, from which we caught the ferry across to the small island of Cape Clear. Tickets to here cost €20 Euros per person, and the ferry across took roughly one hour, with stunning views across to the small islands that dot the southern coast. Okay, here we are. And so to round off our time in the southwest of Ireland, we've decided to come over to Cape Clear, which is a really small island off the coast of the south coast. And we got the ferry from Baltimore. I believe you can also get it from Skull. And it cost us 20 euros for a return ticket. The island is really small. You can't actually bring your car over. There are some cars on the island, however, but I think for getting around, you just need to walk. So thank goodness it is dry today. And I think there's only about 100 people that live here. And we were just talking about it. Like, imagine living this room. Sometimes I think I can romanticise it and then I'm like, I would actually lose my mind. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Yeah, I think in the summer, when it's like really nice weather, it would be lovely because you can just like have peace and quiet. Like it's so tranquil over here. But it would be very long winters. I do yeah. think it would be long winters. So you want a house in Dublin for the winter <laughs> and a house here for the summer when it gets a little bit too busy. And so it seems that it is now the most wonderful time of the year. Look at all this free food. Right, well, oh. There we go. Are they ripe? Yes. Yeah, they're perfect. Oh, it's like literally the perfect time of year. They tasty? Mmm. -hmm. Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, save some for me. There's so many. Mmm. That's so tasty. From here, our trip to Cape Clear took an unexpected turn. After visiting the local Cape Clear distillery, the owner Seamus offered to give us not only a tour of the distillery itself, but of the entire island. Jumping into his car, we were whisked around various museums that can be found across the island, telling all of the fascinating history that Cape Clear has to offer, from the Second World War all the way back to the Bronze Age. There was no need for Seamus to give us the welcome that he did, and it was a perfect example of just how friendly and welcoming that we have found the locals all across Ireland to truly be. I feel like being on this island has really reminded me of going to Alderney in the Channel Islands and even just that experience of like being toured around in someone's car where they're just like giving you all this like background information. I just love it. I love these like really local experiences where you meet people and your day just completely takes a somersault as to where you thought it was going to be and the next minute you're just getting like a really local tour. And we even... <laughs> got a lift back to the harbour, which is perfect because the sun's come out, there's a beer garden right there. In Glasgow we'd be saying, taps off. We were just driving through and we read online that there's a little beach here with a toilet, some water. Just decided to stop off and top her up. And but look at how beautiful it is. This is such a cracking little spot. We're very tempted to just spend the night here. It's like kind of a quiet road just at the side of it. Got a big enough parking space for Ellie. However, there's not enough signal and we do have a little bit of work to do. So I'm not sure whether we spend the night here or we drove past another lay-by just further along the road. Maybe we'll drive back to that and just kind of hang out there. This beach is like really, really beautiful. It's very popular for swimming. There's like loads of people in the water and there's even one of those portable little saunas here, which I've always been desperate to try it out. One other thing that we have actually noticed, um, unfortunately, since we arrived into Cork, is just how many places have height barriers around here. Literally, it seemed like we crossed the border from the Beira Peninsula into West Cork and the first car park we saw had a height barrier. And it's been the same every single place since then. I really don't know what happened in Cork, but 
just keep it in mind because a lot of the time it's actually the car parks to the beaches that we're trying to go to that are like completely blocked as well so we can't even get in to park at the beach. This one here, Red Strand Beach, really beautiful, very good for swimming I think because there's like signposts everywhere and there's actually quite a big car park so you can get parked no bother without needing to worry about height barriers. And that looks like a portable sauna. I know, I was saying that. Portable sauna, baby. I need that right now. I'm like, <laughs> so cold. I don't know why. It looks like such a beautiful night and I'm I just know. like, tired, cold. Oh, we'll go and get a park up. Get some dinner. Get dinner. Okay, dokie. What a view. James Parker here. Got a yeah, I think we'll just chill out here tonight. We'll see you in the morning. Night. Get this one to bed. Tired. Huh? Oh. Right. Bye, guys. park up spot I have to say the last couple of nights I've had a really really good night's sleep and you really just can't beat the views from it either we've had a great sunset and a really nice sunrise there as well we have a massive to-do list to do today though we've got things to get water get gas empty the toilet I'm gonna start the day off with a nice swim always has to show off and be the last one out. I promise when the camera's not rolling, I'm the last one out. High five! Whee! Well done. Why do you say so in face? <laughs> <laughs> that is actually really nice. And the other day we went in for a swim, it was like blistering sunshine, so hot, and I was like, oh my goodness, that water's calling me. We got in there, we were just like, why is this so difficult? Like, it was so hard to get under the water. But I guess that's because we were so hot, whereas today, it was like easy I'd say because I didn't yeah. I wasn't like like hot anymore so like I've realized why the other day I was like why is this so difficult like how we come it's easier in winter than it is on a sunny day but that's why because the majority of the time when we go swimming we're already kind of cold yeah I would say that just means don't let a grey day with big waves put you off as long as they're not too big you know safety first but medium sized waves actually tend to make it easier Pass me out the spanner. So we've managed to find a place that has gas. It's a little bit back in the small town of Skibbereen, but apparently it's right on the high street. Why does it always happen on a quiet road? A car drives past as soon as you try and vlog. But yeah, apparently it's quiet right on the high street, and I don't know where we're going to park outside it. So the plan is to take these into the front, just like sit with them between our legs, and then I can just jump out, run in, change them over, and then jump back into the van again. We need to be a Formula One pit stop. Jump back, you know. This? Ah, I'll show you. So before, maybe about six months ago, her step, I drove over a rock when we we're going to our friend's wedding, and um, this is basically what's happened to her step. Completely smashed. But now, as we're driving along, the step's like fallen down. I don't know if for some reason something pushed the button on the inside, which pushed the step out. We then hit a verge, and it's just basically messed it up again. But now we can't actually get the step up enough to drive. And I was going to pull into the car park just there. But there's a big old height barrier. So instead, <laughs> I've just had to put my hazards on on the road. And I hate doing this because I feel like everyone's cursing me. We're just like sitting here in the middle of the road. But actually, it's because we can't drive. Oh, Ellie. OK. Why is it always when stuff like that happens? A quiet little country road that we slept on last night that had about six cars in 24 hours all of a sudden turns into the M8 outside Glasgow at rush hour. Honestly, I hate it. I feel like I'm like... <laughs> Everyone's like, damn motorhome! Why are you parked in the middle of the road? Are we all good? Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Alright. Take you. Take you. Okay. It means I can just put them back in when I get back. Yeah, 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 that's true. Okay, see ya.
Okay, that is always a good relief when you know that you've got two full bottles of gas. Big relief. Gemma forgot to take the handbrake off. Less of a relief. Next stop on our list today is to go to a wee bridge. We haven't been to do this for a while and uh, we found one in Cork, just outside the city, that we're going to go and go to and get Ellie up in those scales and see how heavy we are. I'm a bit nervous, not going to lie. This is the first time we've done it since we actually bought her. We should have possibly done it a lot sooner, but we've just been so busy, we've struggled for time. I'm thinking though, we've got 650 kilograms of payload. I've been eating a lot of chocolate recently, but I don't think I'm going to be that much over. And then I was thinking about the other things that we've added to her, so it's like solar panel, batteries, pizza oven, stand-up paddle board, and then just like pots and pans and stuff like that. So we shouldn't we shouldn't be over 650 kilograms, so it should be okay. So this is called Middleton Skip Hire. It's about 20 minutes east of Cork. And we phoned up yesterday between half eight and five. You can just show up, you don't need to book. And apparently it's free to actually weigh your van here. So I'll just run over and speak to the office and see what the is. Easy peasy. She was just like, oh, you've got more home, no worries. Just drive all the way around and, and then you just drive up onto the thing and they've got a wee docket that they can give you. Is one without us and one with us. We're under on both of them, which is good news. good news. I think you might need to lose some of your pants though, babe, if we're wanting to um, install a gas cylinder, unfortunately. I mean, I don't think my pants weigh much. I think it's more your pants. <laughs> okay, at least know, we know we're legal. Okay, that's Just, good. Yeah, a lot heavier than I was hoping for, not gonna lie. God, how does that add up so much? From here, it was time to make our final stops of the trip, topping up on the last of our Irish diesel and sorting out our laundry before it was time to head on and find our final park up in Ireland. I mean, that's not the best sign that you want to see, but three hours is plenty of time. We've got two washes in, we need to do a little dry after that. And while that's in the machine, I think we're just going to kind of chill out here and have some dinner. And I'm absolutely starving. It's been a long day of just running around, getting more photos, but we are getting there, guys. Ah. Okay. That's so one thing I'm not going to miss about Ireland is the windy roads. That means I need to brake every two seconds when a tractor comes towards me and my van ends up looking like this. Alright, time to tidy up first. Now guys, when I say what I'm not going to miss about Ireland, that's because we're actually leaving next week. That is officially the end of our World Atlantic Way road trip. Can you believe it? Two months ago, we arrived into Belfast. These fresh-faced little spring chickens with the entirety of the western coast of Ireland ahead of us. And now, less than a week away till we actually leave. It's been an epic adventure. Seriously epic. What was your standout memory, would you say, from the past month? You know, that's really tough. I would say possibly one of our really beautiful beach park ups, like that one that we went to. So one where there was lots of sheep outside the portaloos. Oh. And it was like, there was like nobody else there. It was like so remote. And we were like parked up, like overlooking the beach. And it was absolutely beautiful. And it was just such an accidental find. I can't remember the name of it, but we just happened to come across it. And I just loved that because I just love an accidental find that is just like a winner. So that's definitely been one of my highlights. Yeah, I'd say on that theme, mine's is probably about the same. It's just like having to, happening to stumble across these hidden gems. Like mine was on the Beira Peninsula, where we just happened to go down to this wee loch because I saw it in park for a night. I was like, oh, it looks all right. If it's beautiful, it will probably be really busy and it will do for the night. We got there, there was one other van right beside a loch, mountains all surrounding us, and there was it was so peaceful and so quiet. And we were the only two vans there. Like, I just could not believe our luck. Taste test. You are the best. This is like my fave. Is it still your fave? Mmm. Mmm. Out of ten. 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 There you so have it. Good. There you have so it. So good. Is this one good in the recipe book? There you have it, folks. Gordon Ramsay, Jamie Oliver, coming for you.
Good morning, everyone. Today is sadly the day that we're going to be leaving Ireland. We've got our ferry to catch in about half an hour, and we're currently sitting just south of Rosslare. Last night we arrived here, and we just kind of settled down. It's a perfect little car park, really peaceful, really quiet, only about 10 minutes from the harbour, because when we actually got to the harbour last night, we realised that pretty much everywhere has a height barrier or was really busy. It turns out there's actually all of these car parks like just along the beach that's south of Rosslare Harbour and no one really seems to mind you parking there. It's mostly dog walkers that use them. So we're gonna be out here before anyone comes to walk their dog and it's not a problem. I just need to cook up a quick breakfast which we're gonna take onto the ferry and we need to be at the ferry terminal in 35 minutes. So we're get cracking. Ferry. So after a really nice slow relaxed start to the morning, you know, we set our alarms for half past five so we can continue our morning routine. We have now been sitting in traffic for about 20 minutes for the ferry and we thought we had plenty of time. We were only parked 10 minutes away and we're still sitting in this queue of traffic and it's not moving. I hope they're not just going to leave without us. I know. Like I could have, I got here All oh, those so people here tooting their horns. Know. Let me on. Always something, isn't it? Oh, for goodness sake, man. Check-in apparently closed seven minutes ago. I got here half an hour ago. <laughs> I mean, the benefit is that we actually were supposed to leave tomorrow morning, but we were a day ahead of schedule really, and we just thought, well, why don't we book it for a day earlier? Because we were actually going to arrive in tomorrow night at like, what time? Oh, about midnight. Like about midnight, and then we're going to have to drive straight to the festival that we're going to at the weekend for like four hours. So we have time. And just to top all of this off, I took a seasickness tablet and chewed it when I think I should have just swallowed it, and now my mouth tastes absolutely rank. Fantastic. You know, I do feel a little bit like having like got up early and everything. I feel a bit like I'm going on holiday. So I feel like I'm feeling all these good vibes only. We're going to a festival at the weekend. How exciting. That's great. Number seven. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. We made it. Well, all it's empty. I know. There's no one here. Oh, I think we're fine, baby. Wales, here we come. What an end to a massive trip, but we made it onto the ferry, thank goodness. And what a trip it has been. We actually love coming to Ireland in the van, and I don't think that will be the last time. We've just had such an amazing adventure over here. And we have finished our latest book, and it is going to be sent to the printers. We're going to get the sample copy very, very soon, so we are really buzzing about that. I'm so that. excited to see that. It looks amazing, just from what I've been working on on my laptop. And thank you so much for all of the love and support that we've received whilst we've been over here. We really do appreciate that. But yeah, we're going to send this video off now. We've got a festival this weekend, so if you come to that, thank you so much for coming to see us. And we'll be putting some highlights up on our Instagram stories of that festival so make sure you go and check that out as well if you did enjoy this video please give it a big thumbs up and we'll see you again in the next one i'm struggling with the sunlight bye